Yo, what's going on YouTube? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat, and this is my first ever Wuthering Waves guide. In it, we'll be breaking down the entire Echo system. So whether you're a new player watching this that doesn't even know what an Echo is, or a more experienced player that's just looking to brush up on the basics, this video has you covered. In it, we'll be breaking down the entire Echo system, top to bottom, all the while helping you avoid pitfalls, and most importantly, formulate a game plan so that you can get strong fast. Without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So let's start off by talking about what are Echoes and why they're important. Echoes serve as the primary way to strengthen your characters in Wuthering Waves. Think of them as equipment or artifacts or relics from other games you may have played in the past. They provide your characters with bonus stats, which translates usually to more damage or survivability. What makes Echoes unique is that they have activated abilities that further supplement a character's playstyle. Think of them like extra skills you could use to further increase your damage or add a little bit of utility to a character's playstyle. In essence, team building in Wuthering Waves isn't just three characters. It's three characters and their three Echo skills. Understanding the system will allow you to drastically increase your overall damage and speed up your progress in the game, hence this guide. The game first teaches you about Echoes right after Rover's encounter with Crownless early on. Whenever you defeat an enemy in the overworld, there is a chance an Echo of them will be left behind as evidenced by the translucent model. Simply collect the Echo, and it will be added to your inventory. Throughout your time playing Wuthering Waves, it's incredibly important for you to fight every single enemy that you come across and pick up as many Echoes as possible for two reasons. Number one, every new Echo you find increases your data bank level. The strength of the Echoes that you can find and equip increases with this data bank level. Raising it up quickly helps increase the speed at which you can progress through the game. Number two is because once you hit data bank level 15, you can exchange all of your weaker echoes for a chance at legendary echoes, aka five stars as the community sometimes call them. These five star echoes give the most amount of stats and power to your characters. It cements them as the main echoes that you want to be farming and leveling up. The catch is you can't start getting them until you hit data bank level 15. And data bank level 15, unfortunately, is locked behind you in level 30. Until you reach Union level 30, however, my advice is to simply complete every single optional quest and puzzle you come across. You'll want to do most of these anyways because, well, they give you currency for the game's gotcha. And several of the quests also open up new areas around the map that you'll need to visit later anyways to get specific echoes. One other bit of advice. Try your best to not waste any of your echo XP until you hit data bank level 15. If you get stuck, feel free to level some for stats, but Considering how stingy this game currently is with doling out XP, I think the longer you could go without spending it, the better off you're going to be as a free-to-play or low spender. Anyways, once you hit Union level 30, it's time to learn how to become a Pokemon Master. Yep, that's right, this is the part of the game where you gotta catch them all. This tab here under Databank will show you the highest star rarity of each type of Echo you have obtained thus far. In order to hit data bank level 15, you'll have to get the purple rarity for almost every single enemy listed here. Simply scroll down to the echo that you're missing, hit the detect and track, and the game will automatically show you the locations of your farming targets on the map. Just roam the world and catch Pokemon. It's that simple. For boss type echoes such as Crownless, you need to only defeat them to have a chance to gain the echo. You don't have to spend wave shards, so don't use them needlessly. If for some reason you've reached Union level 30, by the way, and your data bank level is stuck at 14 despite having all the Echoes farmed, it's because you probably need to level up your player guidebook, as each level contains data bank experience that can't be obtained anywhere else. Once you hit 15, you can now start farming 5-star Echoes if you choose, but there is a small caveat. You see, at DB15, you only have a 30% chance that any given Echo is a 5-star. It's only once you get to DB17 that you have a 50% chance, which is obviously much better if you're trying to get those coveted 5 stars. If you're the patient type, I recommend going back around the map and farming random 5 star echoes again until you hit databank 17. If you're impatient like me, or just have already hit databank level 17, feel free to use the handy data merge feature, which can be found as the fourth tab underneath of databank. This is the reason, by the way, I said to collect every single echo earlier in the video. You see, Data Merge makes it so that you can turn five low-level or unwanted Echoes into a random Echo that could potentially be useful. And this includes ones that you don't even have. And whenever you obtain one you don't have, well, that completes your databank and therefore raises your databank level. 
I converted a ton of echoes as you see here on your screen and was able to get that last little bit of data bank XP I needed to finally hit level 17 and truly start my end game grind. Now that you've hit data bank 17, it's time to work smarter, not harder. You could mindlessly roam the map and kill everything you come across, but I find it's best to have a goal in mind when building characters in the games that I'm playing. For Wuthering Waves, I think it's important for you to have an idea of what characters you want to play and how those characters interact with each other. This gives you an idea of what sonatas as well as what stats you want on your echoes. For example, let's take a look at Spectral Rover. If you want to increase their damage output, well then farming the Celestial Light Sonata set is going to be ideal. But damage isn't the only thing you can do with Rover. If you want a build that just spams their ultimate for crowd control applications, you're going to want energy regeneration, which is provided by the Moonlit Cloud Sonata set. If you have Rover's Resonance Chain at level 4, well, then their ultimate starts to heal the entire team, making Rejuvenating Glow a great choice if you're looking for a support-based build. If you're not sure what you want your characters to do, consider looking at their Forte Circuit and Outro Skills, as this usually gives you an idea of what they can do besides just damage. For example, Senha's Outro Skill increases basic attack damage for the next character, making her a great sub DPS for a hero such as Kalcharo. Once you have your game plan, it's time to start grinding. Open up the Sonata Gallery underneath Databank and start detecting and tracking the various enemies that drop the echoes of the sets that you want. Note the various different classes of the enemies. Common, Elite, Overlord, and Calamity. These classes determine the cost of the echo that drops, with their values being displayed on screen here. Your character can hold up to 5 echoes at a time, and the total cost of these echoes cannot exceed the cost that is shown here on your screen. You also cannot play duplicate echoes of the same name, so do keep that in mind. The echo in this primary slot here will be the echo ability your character can activate in battle. You don't necessarily need to use the highest cost one by the way in the slot in case you were wondering. As of the recording of this video, the general idea is to play a 4 cost echo, 2 3 cost echoes, and two one-cost echoes, as this gives you the overall highest amount of stats. And the reason for this is due to the main stats on echoes, which you can view with this table here on your screen. Additionally, you're going to want to go for either two two-piece sonata sets, or ideally one five-piece sonata set to reap the benefits of those effects. As you can see, the four-cost echoes give crit rate and crit damage percentage, which are pivotal to massively increase your damage multipliers. When you're first starting out, crit rate percentage will give you the best increase to your DPS early on, while crit damage is ideal later on as you get better echoes and weapons. If you've ever played a Hoyoverse game, you know how important elemental damage percentage and energy regen percentage are, so you'll want to focus on echoes that have these main stats for your three costs. I find damage percentage is best for DPS, with energy regen being a bit better for supports, or perhaps going one of each if you're looking for a sub DPS. Just make sure if you're trying to get something like say, arrow damage percentage for your Geon, that it's on a Sierra Gale set and not something like Void Thunder. This is a really easy mistake to make by the way. As for one cost, I recommend going for attack percentage on almost everything. As I'm recording this, nearly everything in Wuthering Wave scales off attack. That's DPS, shields, even healing. And considering you could dodge or parry almost everything in the game, going for HP or defense percentage doesn't really seem worth it unless you're one of the rare characters that actually scales off of those stats. Let's talk about tuning, aka rolling for substats on your echoes. If you've ever played any gear grinder gacha game before, you probably already have an idea of how this is going to go. Once you level up an Echo to level 5, 10, 15, 20, or 25, you'll have the ability to unlock a random substat on the Echo by tuning it. It's important to not immediately level an Echo to 25 from the get-go and then start tuning it just because it has the right main stat. If the substats on it tune badly, or they just don't help the character that you're trying to build in the first place, well then it's basically a huge waste of resources. Instead, I find it's best to set a rule for yourself, such as, I'm going to stop leveling and tuning this piece once two or more substats aren't useful for the character that I want to play. From there, level the echo up to five and tune the substats. If it's something useful, such as say, heavy attack damage for your main DPS Jian, or energy regen for your ultimate spam Jian Shin build, 
well then sure, keep going. Repeat this process to level 10, and so on and so forth, until you arrive at a strong piece that you're happy with. And then repeat this process for each Echo slot on your character. One of the best things about Wuthering Waves is farming the Echoes doesn't actually take up any resources, simply your time. So it's possible for you to stockpile an abundance of Echoes as you play and find the right ones for your character. Don't just waste XP and tuning materials on lackluster Echoes, as this is a surefire way to halt your progress since these resources are incredibly scarce, especially if you are a free-to-play or low spender. Let's wrap up this video with some echo farming tips and tricks. One of the best parts about this game is actually its co-op. Just hop on a Discord call with your buddies and plan farming routes around the map to quickly hunt down echoes for specific sets that you all need. As I was recording this video, my friends and I were just running from boss to boss using waypoints we set up to quickly and efficiently farm 4 cost echoes for all the characters that we wanted to play. This is also a great way to break up the monotony and just enjoy the game with your friends. Instead of farming for character or weapon XP, consider farming tacit discord fields. These drop bonus echoes, XP for those echoes, and the very coveted tuner materials. Due to the sheer number of echoes that you'll be needing to tune to find good stats for each of your characters, these resources will always be in high demand. Lastly, if you want to farm echoes but don't really want to pay attention or teleport all over the map, you could simply just fight Dreamless over and over again. Warp to the boss's spawn point, choose the highest level that you can clear without thinking too much, kill it, claim the echo, and leave. Every 5 kills, you can fuse your dreamlesses together to get a chance at a random echo that might be worth using. Not the most efficient way to farm, but definitely mindless enough for me to put something on like Netflix or Crunchyroll in the background. And that's going to do it for my echo guide for Wuthering Waves. If you think it'll help out a friend, feel free to share the video, and if you want to see more guides in a similar style to this one, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Did I make a mistake or do you just have another question? Feel free to hit me up on Discord or over on my Twitch, which is twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. Both of those links, by the way, can be found in this video's description. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.